Very good morning uh, to all of you who are joining uh, this webinar on affirmative action. Uh, my name is Srirang Dhawle. I work with Tata Motors and I am part of uh, CIS committee on affirmative action. Uh, CII, as we all know, is the leading uh, Indian industry's uh, efforts on affirmative action agenda since uh, 2006 and encouraging industry to take up measures on affirmative action in corporate India through various activities. It's my privilege to have, us, have with us Mr. Farah Foots to interact with us on the subject which is of uh, paramount national importance today. Mr. Fuchs uh, has completed his MS in Electrical Engineering from Stanford University, post which he joined Forbes Marshall, of which he is a director today. Forbes Marshall, of course, is one of India's leading companies in the field of steam engineering, energy con conservation, utilities management, and industrial process automation and control. Hoops Marshall employs over 1,100 people and serves markets in India, Southeast, East Asia, and Middle East, Africa, North and South America. Mr. Forbes is the past chairman of CII Family Business Network India chapter and uh, CII Western Region. He was conferred with the uh, CII President's Award for Outstanding Leadership to CII's Western Region and for furthering the overall CII agenda. Mr. Parat Fuchs has been actively involved since Affirmative Action was launched formally in CII in the year of 2006. He is currently the co-chair of CII National Task Force on Affirmative Action. We welcome Farad Forbes uh, and uh, request him to share his views and address the concerns on subject. A bit of a change which uh, Mr. Forbes uh, has asked us to do is that uh, rather than a long uh, opening comment, uh, we thought it, it would be better that uh, if people raise their questions. So uh, Mr. Forbes will be uh, making his opening comments and uh, you all are most welcome to write in your questions which will be then addressed by Mr. Forbes. Over to you, Mr. Forbes, for your opening comments. Thank you very much, Rira, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's a, a pleasure to be with you uh, this morning, and I hope that we can have a useful uh, one-hour session uh, and discussion on affirmative action. Uh, Sriram over here, uh, I must mention, uh, has not really introduced himself uh, to a great extent, but. Uh, has been very actively involved from Tata Motors and as you know Tata is one of the organizations which has probably taken the whole affirmative action agenda most seriously and Sri Rang personally has been driving the affirmative action uh, initiatives uh, at Tata Motors here in Pune. Uh, so we will have the pleasure and the benefit of his, uh, his presence here today to also answer questions uh, on the subject from a practical aspect in terms of how it's actually being implemented in an organization. Uh, as was mentioned uh, in the introductory comments, our whole initiative on affirmative action within CII started in 2006 and this started because uh, there was a very strong move at that time to bring about reservations in the private sector. So this was actually CII's response, it was industry's response to the drive by all the political parties at the time to actually institute reservations in the private sector. So what we proposed was that we would have a code of conduct where all our CII member companies would follow a basic code uh, in terms of how to address the issue of uh, discrimination which had existed uh, in, against SESTs for generations uh, and also 
not just the as aspect of discrimination because in many of our companies we all thought even six seven years ago that we had no discrimination that we were completely equal opportunity employers but we never measured um, how many uh, SESTs we had in our organization nor did we even want to measure it because we felt that this was something which uh, was not necessary to do. However, however, uh, as you all know in business unless you measure you cannot track progress and so the important thing which we had to do was to first start by at least measuring uh, the numbers of the people who from the socially underprivileged communities were actually being affected uh, through our various initiatives and you have to start with the base at first. So you need to actually know how many you have in your various programs, how many you physically employ and then subsequently based on our various initiatives we are able to then see whether we are making progress in terms of the numbers that we are affecting as a result of our various initiatives. So that was actually how this whole thing started way back in 2006. We have in CII focused our activities in four areas. One is in the area of education. Uh, obviously that's the most fundamental, the most basic. It also takes the longest time because starting this at the primary level, at the secondary level in schools, uh, by the time those individuals actually get into the workforce and as a result of these extra initiatives uh, to see the impact of that we have to wait quite a while. But it is an essential necessary uh, element uh, in the whole uh, initiative because it is through this that we actually fill the pipeline so that we can have adequately qualified people later for employment uh, in due course. The second area is in terms of employability. Uh, employability in terms of improving the scope and improving the, the prospects for people who are graduating. Uh, whether they may be from the uh, from engineering colleges, whether they may be from you know arts and science uh, institutions, commerce institutions, or e even at a lower level, at just at the ITI level. So we have had a number of initiatives in the area of uh, of uh, um, whether it's finishing schools or skills development to actually enhance the employability of such people. Third is the area of entrepreneurship. Now entrepreneurship is something which uh, is a very important and an easy way to actually enhance the number of people who are affected uh, uh, by our initiatives. Uh, in this area I would like uh, later on in this uh, in, in our introductory remarks to have Sri Rang say a few words about how they've actually gone about doing this uh, very effectively uh, within the Tata organization. And then of course fourth, the fourth E in the whole thing is employment in terms of knowing how many we actually employ in our own organizations and then what specific initiatives we can take to enhance that employment uh, within our organizations. Now in these six or seven years the efforts have been put in by industry and uh, we should say that and we need to compliment many of our organizations who have really taken this on quite seriously and have made a difference. However we need to recognize that it's a grassroots initiative, it takes time and we have lots of pressure from our government and from various political parties uh, to really step up the efforts very significantly. Um, I'd just like to now go on and, and, and mention a few of the things which are being done today uh, by CII companies 
share that with you and then uh, hopefully this will serve as a as a as a uh, as a prompt to you for some of your questions uh, subsequently there are three ways that companies can be involved in affirmative action number 1 is by actually making a contribution writing a check to whether it's CII or whether it's uh, an NGO which is actually doing some specific work in, uh, in this area. Second way would be to actually partner, partner with one of the CII initiatives which are being run through the Secretariat or partner with an NGO which is actually uh, working uh, uh, within the SCSD communities. Uh, and then the third way which is the way we would uh, we would uh, uh, recommend uh, is to have direct involvement where you as an organization uh, through your whether it is your CSR uh, uh, department, your HR function, um, your purchase function where you can directly participate uh, in one of these four the, the four E's which we talked about, that is employment, um, employability, uh, entrepreneurship and education. Um, um, an important aspect in any of this is tracking. Many of our companies are doing something or the other. Uh, what we are not doing well enough is actually tracking the number of people who we are affecting as a result of our initiatives. And so what we would appeal to our members is to please uh, track this within your organization and then report this to CII uh, so that they in turn can collate uh, the information and then submit this to CII central office in Delhi uh, who in turn uh, Mr. Muthuraman, who is our chairman of our committee uh, of the National Task, Task Force on Affirmative Action, he submits a report to the Prime Minister's office once a quarter. He has made a commitment to the Prime Minister's office that we will report our progress on affirmative action each quarter. So whatever information we gather from our respective companies, which then feeds into the local secretariats in CII, then gets fed into the the national secretariat. Then gets part gets compiled into this uh, this task force report, which is then submitted to the prime minister. So tracking is a very important uh, necessity, and I would like to just re-emphasize the importance uh, of all of you doing that and making sure that you have someone in your organization who is is uh, responsible for this particular task uh, in terms of collating all the initiatives that you may be doing in this particular area. Many of you are already doing a lot of CSR work. The CSR is, and especially today with the uh, company law bill amendment where, where uh, with, sorry, the, the new company law bill where there's a stipulation of 2% of net profits to be spent on CSR. Um, this makes it even more possible now that as part of your CSR initiatives, you can indeed very specifically target it towards affirmative action. So affirmative action can be one part of your CSR initiative within your organization. But importantly, it's very necessary to track the number of SCSDs that you would be affecting as a result of your CSR initiative. So it's something where previously you may not have known. If we can request you now to actually just track the number and based on the number that you have, evaluate and see whether that number is a representative sample from the community in which you operate. So let's say, you know, the average is say 20%. Uh, do you have at least 20% of your uh, members within your uh, CSR initiative who are from
from the SESD community, the ones who are affected. And can, is there a way to step that up? In some areas, we have a high dominance and a high prominence of SESDs where it could be as much as 70 or 80 percent, in which case we need to make sure that we have at least that representative number, if not more, uh, uh, who, are, who are targeted within your CSR initiatives. Um, there are some organizations which, some of our organizations which are also uh, uh, operating in areas which are dominated by SESTs. Uh, and this is something which again uh, we have in CII been requested by the government to specifically uh, target these SESD dominated areas uh, and have some specific interventions in, in, in this. Uh, there are already a number of skill development initiatives which we have within CII. Uh, we have a National Skills Development Foundation as well and there are a number of number of programs and projects which we are facilitating through CII in this particular area. Uh, and we would request our member companies to, to get involved with some of these, uh, to actually provide some funding for these programs and then uh, as a result hopefully we are able to have a better level of skill uh, coming out of some of these programs which can then directly affect us in terms of improvement in employment as well. Um, I'd like to now just turn over to Sriram uh, on the whole area of entrepreneurship and supplier diversity. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, within the Tata organization, there is uh, a lot of work being done already. Uh, just one comment uh, as a matter of introduction there is only a limit to how many people we can employ in our own organizations. But if it is possible to help other entrepreneurs, those entrepreneurs in turn are able to employ so many more. So if by helping five entrepreneurs, you can have an exponential effect of having a multiple of those five who would then be employed within these supplier organizations. So that is the whole objective here. And I'd like to turn it over now to Sri Lanka to say a few words on the whole area of uh, what Tata's has been doing in this particular area. Right. Uh, thank you so very much uh, Farad for the opening comments. Uh, it's a privilege to talk to more than 100 companies in India on this uh, subject of affirmative action. as. Uh, as has been mentioned correctly, uh, if you look at uh, the four E's, in fact, uh, uh, except the one E which is education, uh, rest of the three E's fall beyond uh, the CSR domain, the way we understand CSR traditionally. Uh, the employment and employability E possibly sits in uh, human resources and uh, technical training and the entrepreneurial Development E, which is all about uh, supply chain diversity, is uh, located in the domain of purchase. Uh, now, with uh, Tata Affirmative Action Program, what one uh, one uh, tried to do was to put a system and a process in place where uh, the leaders commit themselves to the affirmative action agenda. So then there is a policy document uh, which is signed off by the topmost leader and uh, which then is converted, uh, which is deployed through a systematic strategy and the communication of that strategy and final, finally the initiatives take place. Now particularly talking about uh, supply chain diversity which is uh, completely linked with core of your business. Uh, we feel that uh, it's an approach which is uh, from scarcity of 2% to 100% which is an abundance area. So it's not just about 2%. 2% is a great opportunity for all of us to contribute but going far beyond that and it would have direct connect with your core of business. 
uh, in that, uh, of course, the policy should be in place vis-a-vis uh, -vis any organization which then gets cascaded through your balance scorecard or any other mechanism that uh, one has in the organization of uh, for, for the people who are working in purchase and that's very important. Uh, and that again cannot be left to the balance scorecard. It again needs to be taken uh, at the level of the purchase officer, the purchase uh, chief, purchase manager and the purchase officer and they need to have uh, targets vis-a-vis -vis supply chain diversity. And uh, what we found is that uh, we may want to have look at uh, two kinds of targets. One, of course, is the quantum of uh, business that goes to, uh, goes to uh, communities from uh, the vendors from SCST communities. That could be one aspect of target setting. The second aspect, of course, is not just quantum of business because if we are talking about not just working with creamy layer, with, even within SCST communities, then we may want to have a target which is a number-based target. How many vendors do I have from these communities working with, with, with the organization, so to say? And as I said, that uh, it's deployed through balance scorecard mechanism as well as individual performance management mechanism. As uh, uh, Farad rightly pointed out that uh, all this deployment needs to be tracked and reported back to CII and uh, 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 to, your, to, to your CEO who is anchoring this process. And this has been uh, uh, done within Tata, Tata Group through the Tata Affirmative Action Program. Uh, now, uh, with this, uh, uh, may, I, may I start the question answer session with uh, the first question to Farad about, uh, uh, well, we all have understood and uh, possibly are convinced about the importance of affirmative action. So beyond this webinar, uh, Farad, uh, what all CII can do uh, if I'm a MSME or if I'm a a company which has not been working on affirmative action. So uh, what all CII can offer to us uh, in terms of uh, actually driving the affirmative action agenda in my organization? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, as far as how CII, how you can actually use CII, CII has a number of regional um, workshops. We have a number of sessions which we do on affirmative action. Uh, we would encourage you to participate in some of those. Uh, we can also provide you with examples, case studies of what different companies are doing. And please understand, it is not only that you don't need to be a really large company only to have affirmative action. You can actually do this at your scale, at your level, uh, in any organization. So it is not something which is only restricted to, you know, or for the privilege of large organizations to do. Uh, we also would be more than willing from the Secretariat in CII to engage with you to give you some examples of what we can actually suggest to you it could be, in, as I mentioned, in three areas. One could be just writing or supporting uh, an initiative. For example, here in Pune, we have been doing these finishing schools for uh, uh, people who are in their fourth year of uh, professional courses. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a it's a ten week training program which we are running with the local institution here, uh, the Symbiosis uh, Institute of Foreign uh, Languages and uh, they are running a program with CII for the last uh, five, six years. Uh, we've, I think, had about 20 batches of people who go through this and they need to be sponsored. So you could write a check to CII to uh, support one of these batches. And of course, this is in Pune, but you know there are, there are similar initiatives all over the country as well. So your local CII office should be able to help you uh, uh, give you and identify 
uh, which of these programs need support. So one way is to write a check. The second would be to actually, they will connect you with some NGO which is doing some work in that particular area and you could support the initiative uh, which is actually being carried out by that particular NGO. And then of course the last way is of course to directly be involved and this is where the case studies can be of use to you. Uh, we can actually put you in touch with the companies which are actually doing some of this work already. Uh, as I mentioned, we already have a, an example here of a company doing a lot of work in the area of supplier diversity, the Tata Group and uh, uh, Mr. Muthurama and Anj Rang have often mentioned that they would be more than willing to share their experience, share their, uh, their views on how this can be done in other organizations too. Thanks so much Farad and I am extremely happy to share a lot of questions, suggestions which are flowing in. So uh, let me just start by sharing uh, what Mr. Sharad Gangal is saying. Sharad Gangal is saying that uh, I suggest there should be a regular interval prescribed to report. For instance, before each affirmative action meeting, uh, Gangal Sab, we take note of it. In fact, there is a there is a framework that has been developed. We'll uh, we'll we'll arrange that uh, it arrange for uh, its larger sharing with the entire group here. Uh, now, there is one interesting question from Amrut Patin. Uh, what is the percentage of SCST in the company uh, which that would reflect that the affirmative action deployment is good? Uh, so uh, Farad, any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, I think, I think the way you have to look at it is, uh, is in your particular area uh, where you are located, how representative is your employment spectrum in your own organization? in relationship with the area that you're located in. So for example, in the average in the country is 25% or so, 23% or so is what the census says. Now that is the average, but in a particular area uh, you may have many more, in which case then one should have a larger representation uh, of SESTs within your employment uh, workforce. Now it's not just a matter of employment in numbers, but it's also you have to also see where the people are employed. Uh, typically you will find that many of our SESTs are employed at the lower levels of organizations. Now what we also have to see is that you know um, through some of our programs, through some of our special initiatives, uh, is it possible to see a more representative sample in higher levels of the organization as well? So I think that's, that's one of the things that if, if affirmative action is really working, then you should be having representative samples uh, across our organization. That's, that's very well said. In fact, the new companies uh, uh, a law which uh, mandates us from gender diversity angle that there should be at least one uh, lady as part of your board of directors and this is uh, one more way to look at so not exactly. just numbers but where those numbers are coming from. Uh, now this one more question from uh, just, just before we yeah, go into yes. that I just want to add one more point yes. and yes. I think in this you see we have to get away from the concept of you know having quotas and reservations. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are saying that we want to actually have adequate qualified people. So the affirmative action initiatives helps us to actually generate those adequate qualified people. Right. Okay, so that's the main, main difference. We are not saying that you know we must reserve and we must actually put in a person who is not qualified. True. We want to have a qualified person in, in, to, for promotion. True. But are we providing the necessary inputs to see that people can actually qualify uh, by being adequately trained, by being adequately competent. Okay, one more question which is linked with employment, uh, Farad, uh, that comes in from Sunita Wazir. She is asking that what is the best way in your experience to track information from employees, especially white collar employees, any experiences you can share. So Sunita, uh, uh, I'll request uh, Farad to respond to that, the experiences that we had in Tata organization is that 
we followed a policy of self disclosure and uh, most of the employees uh, once uh, they are told about this initiative in the right spirit uh, are more than willing to share their categories please remember we are not asking for caste right we are asking for categories and uh, most of the people are open for sharing their category uh, when we are telling them about uh, affirmative action program so to say and uh, if you don't want to go back to the people uh, the 10th certificate the SSC certificate actually tells you about category so if you want to do it indirectly that's the document that you may want to refer to uh, while uh, while actually figuring out what is the profile of your employees. Uh, for yeah. a, just uh, yes, absolutely. I think I support what Shriram says 100%. But also, when you are recruiting new people, uh, in any case, uh, as was mentioned, the the school dealing certificate does actually specify this. So keep track of that. And so when you're, especially when you're recruiting new people, it becomes very easy to do. Uh, and for your existing workforce, it's very much, I mean, different organizations have done it differently. Uh, but I think the best way is to make it completely voluntary, make it through a process of self-disclosure. And then within the HR function, it should be possible to actually look through the records of your own members and see, uh, go through their, the, the 10th, standard uh, school leaving certificate and you should be able to actually get a surprising amount of data uh, just on your own really without uh, without creating any kind of you know uh, embarrassment or uh, um, uh, making people feel uncomfortable right uh, so uh, the Vyam Patel is asking a question on supply chain diversity and CII. Uh, he is asking uh, how can CII help in the area of supply chain, supply diversity. Uh, any thoughts on that, for us? Um, yes, there are there are a couple of initiatives which we had. Uh, there is an organization called the Dalit uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, DICI. They work very closely with CII. Mr. Milin Kamle is the chairman of uh, Dickey, and he is uh, an active member of CII and particip participates in various events that we have. We have had a number of um, Dickey CII member um, vendor supply, uh, buyer seller meets. And uh, we've had some here in Western region. We've had some in the Northern region. There was one in, uh, November in Northern region uh, and through this uh, one can connect with members of Dickey uh, and you have an opportunity then to see whether it is possible to make some of these entrepreneurs part of your supply chain. So that is one of the ways that CII can help. We also have some initiatives through the BYST organization and in BYSD, BYSD mentors uh, underprivileged entrepreneurs and there are a number of these entrepreneurs who come from the SCSD community as well. So we can actually provide a list of some of these people, some of the companies and their products and then you can then examine whether, to, whether you, know, you can have some of them fall in, uh, into your uh, supply chain and your vendor base. Just to add to this, uh, the internal aspect of supply chain diversity is sensitization of purchase organizations. Uh, uh, typically, uh, you would uh, you would appreciate that the leadership and the HR guys or CSR guys are sensitized towards the cause of uh, affirmative action. Uh, CII can certainly help you out uh, as far as sensitizing your purchase team vis-a-vis uh, -vis affirmative action program demand, uh, demand. so uh, please feel free to connect with your local CII chapter for uh, taking this forward just, uh, just uh, please uh, bear with us the questions are pouring in we are just trying to figure out which are the representative ones uh, we will ensure uh, that uh, all your questions are answered even after uh, this webinar uh, now one question uh, for us which has come uh, uh, from A Khan, which is again linked to supply chain diversity, which uh, uh, 
Mr. Khan wants to know that uh, whether you just look at the uh, name and background of the owner uh, uh, of the business uh, and then uh, typecast is as uh, affirmative action or there is something else that uh, you look at. Uh, maybe we can share what DK yeah. does in terms of uh, scrutinizing and uh, shortlisting. Yeah, I, I, I think you know we don't need to be too uh, picky about how uh, whether someone qualifies or doesn't qualify. I think ultimately we are, we are looking at helping people who are from underprivileged backgrounds. Um, yes, this particular initiative is targeted towards SESTs, but there are many others who are also deserving. And you can certainly extend your your uh, your affirmative action um, uh, initiatives to cover people beyond the SCSD community. So whether it is uh, women entrepreneurs or whether it is people from uh, minorities or from you know uh, from wherever. Ultimately, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to actually. Uh, uplift people who are from socially underprivileged uh, um, um, backgrounds and uh, to make a difference, to make an impact there. Right. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Mr. Khan, uh, you've asked us uh, that uh, where can I get the list. Uh, please get in touch with your local CI office. They'll get you a list from uh, Dicky. And uh, uh, please, uh, other people as well, uh, what is happening is that uh, beyond Nikki, if you have any vendor falling in this category uh, uh, who is good, please uh, connect that vendor to CII because a lot of the big companies now that I have been, I, I just shared uh, that it's there in BSC and KRAs. Uh, people are looking out for good vendors, so to say, from these categories. So if you have a vendor already in your pipeline, share those details with us in CI. Uh, uh, Baby PS shares with us that uh, they are supporting a tribal school and uh, they, they are uh, developing infrastructure. Very good, Baby. Uh, as uh, Farah pointed out, please tweet that in, in the format. Uh, uh, shared by CII so that it becomes part of the entire uh, CII report and update as well. Uh, we may want to cover your case study uh, here. Uh, now, uh, there's one question that has uh, that has come in, uh, which is from Mr. Sanjay Pradhan. Uh, he's asking us how CII can facilitate uh, for backward and forward linkages of uh, the community products or services, maybe like Agarbatti, Fly Ash, etc. Uh, uh, any thoughts on this? Yeah. Well, again, uh, I would say again, if if you have um, any, if, again through Dicky, if it's possible to see if there are any uh, entrepreneurs in your area who who might be. Uh, able to engage with you in this particular uh, area, um, that, that would be one possibility. Um, the other would be if there is an NGO which is working in your particular area uh, with the community in, in, in your in your uh, where your plant is located. Perhaps there would be some way of uh, connecting with that NGO to to um, work with the community in this. Right, uh, Mr. Sanjay Zorapur uh, Farad is asking that uh, if there is any government policy uh, in any Indian state that mandates specific requirement of employing SCST employees. Yes, he is from uh, yeah. Crompton Greens. Yes, yeah. there is. See, there there has always been reservation for SCSTs in public sector companies in India. This has been there for. For, for, for years, I think soon after independence. The, the fact is that these reservations in the public sector have not really worked very effectively because very often there are not adequately qualified people who can fill these positions. And as a result, in many of the public sector organizations where there is reservations, uh, many 
positions remain unfilled. The positions which are reserved for SPST remain unfilled. So the policy has been there. In 2006, there was a strong move by all the political parties to have the same kind of reservation in the private sector. And they, the government came very close to passing legislation uh, on this, but there was a strong opposition from industry and actually uh, not just opposition but there was also recognition by many of us that we were not doing very much in this particular area and that we needed to do something and that's how uh, the whole CII affirmative action initiative was formulated it was formulated by a task force led by Dr. Jamshed Irani uh, and then this was presented to the Prime Minister and then um, that's how the whole initiative has begun within CII. Thanks. Uh, this one is interesting from uh, Jaya Srivastava. She is asking uh, whether establishing a manufacturing unit in an area having sizable population of SEST and providing infrastructure such as roads etc. in that area, can it be considered as affirmative action? Yes, very much. Uh, definitely it should be considered as affirmative action. And uh, uh, the, the important thing to do here would be is actually try and collate. Of course, you would know what your employment is, how many employed, how many people are employed, how many SCSTs are employed. Uh, that is relatively easy to report. But is it possible for you to also maybe extend the, the uh, assessment to the impact on the community around you? to see how that is also being impacted. And you feed this into CII, we can collate this, we can collect this information as part of what we need to report. Right, so uh, so it's not about where you are putting up your plant, whether you are employing those people, whether you are building skills of the people nearby, whether the vendors in that area are linked with your business, are the relevant questions, uh, Jaya, you may want to look at. So having merely having a plant in the tribal dominated area and you know, uh, laying down a road for your own business purpose does not really qualify. You will need to look at these four E's and then factor in those the performance of your company against those four E's to qualify as affirmative action. Uh, the, there's one question from Krishnanan Mavin Kurpe. He is asking uh, any suggestion for implementing this in construction sector apart from procurement. Uh, Farad, uh, kindly help us understand uh, the skill development agenda which is a big ticket agenda as far as uh, construction sector is concerned on affirmative action sphere, please. So again, I think it will be a question of, you know, measuring how many SCSTs are affected in your, in your, uh, um, in your employment. So obviously in the construction sector you employ large numbers of people. Um, it would involve tracking how many you employ uh, who are from the SCST community and also possibly uh, seeing how you can provide some special inputs for training such that they can be even more employable and also in terms of at construction sites there's a lot of young people who are around. There are young children so is there anything that can be done by way of a crash or school uh, specifically? Is there anything that can be done for, for the youth in terms of special training which can be provided to them such that they can be more employable later on? Those are the kinds of things that you can actually look at. Uh, Mr. Anis Mohammed is asking can we make existing vendors to adopt uh, affirmative action? Wonderful question uh, Anis. Uh, in fact, a lot of uh, the companies which have adopted affirmative action, uh, as I said, uh, strategy and communication of strategy becomes uh, very key to success of affirmative action. Say, for example, a company that is working in automobile sector uh, uh, sources roughly around 80% uh, components from, uh, from external vendors. And unless you sensitize them and look at your tier 2, 3, 4, uh, we will be just looking at a small minute section which is which is within our company. So 
Uh, vendor communication meetings is the forum that a lot of companies have of late started using to communicate affirmative action and they are also encouraging their vendors to take up the cause of affirmative action in their own respective companies. Uh, CI will be most happy to uh, come and present uh, the affirmative action agenda in uh, your vendor communication meetings. Uh, please, uh, please chart this out, map this out that your vendors have also started working on affirmative action and report it back to uh, back to CII so that we take note of it. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Kare Farad uh, who is heading CSR in uh, Tata Communications is asking uh, while uh, considering the entrepreneurship practice under affirmative action is there a given number percentage of employees employed by a vendor or partners so to say. So, uh, um, well, um, if you, is there a given number of percentage of employees employed by the vendor partner? Um, I'm not too clear on what that, what you mean by that. Um, I think again, uh, it's not, there is no, there is no prescribed formula in this. It is, uh, it is uh, uh, how many entrepreneurs can we develop? So if you can bring in some entrepreneurs as part of your supply chain, as part of your, your uh, um, uh, purchasing uh, pool, uh, that's really what you want to see. Uh, and then maybe you know how many are actually employed by that particular entrepreneur. Um, that's, that's pretty much all that we need to do. I think what we need to really look at here is that um, rather than looking at numbers of people or numbers of entrepreneurs, I think what you should look at is what percentage of your total purchases come from SEST entrepreneurs. That is something which could be an easy benchmark to have in any organization. And initially in many of our organizations it may start from a very low number. But at least if you start measuring it, then perhaps over a period of time we would be able to address that and be able to build that number to a larger number. So whether it's working with other Dickey and entrepreneurs, working with uh, uh, an SESD entrepreneur who you already are working with today, and through them you work with two others or three others, uh, you enhance your, your, your purchasing uh, quantum uh, from this segment of uh, entrepreneurs. There. Right. Uh, so you could look at it from both ways. In fact, uh, Dicky shares with us that uh, uh, typically SEST entrepreneurs tend to have uh, higher employment vis-a-vis uh, -vis SESTs. But however, you know, my personal take on this is that uh, even if the SCST entrepreneur is employing other category people, that too is, a, is an indicator of social change. So it needs to be looked at from that context. Uh, there's one question from uh, Amrut Patil. Uh, he is asking, uh, did you face any opposition from employees or the board uh, while implementing affirmative action, uh, Farad? Uh, do you, how did you handle it? I think, you know, this is obviously an area which needs to be handled with a lot of sensitivity. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, if we can just make sure that, you know, you make it as voluntary as possible, make it as much by way of self-disclosure, and if you actually create awareness for why we are doing this whole thing on affirmative action, generally, I think you'll find that there will not be any resentment. You will not find any embarrassing uh, issues. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. There's another question here from Mr. Suresh Reddy about uh, um, you know do you consider uh, my um, he mentions about minorities as a target group under affirmative action. Uh, yes, uh, it is actually part. In fact we would encourage you to, to extend your affirmative action initiatives beyond just SCSDs. And many of us in our, in our different companies are already doing this. For the purpose of this 
PII initiative, it is actually at the moment as a start we have restricted it to SCSDs. It's something which is a broad agenda which we have and as a result it has been restricted for purpose of reporting etc. Uh, to SCSDs. But we would encourage you to actually take it beyond, take it towards minorities, take it towards uh, uh, gender diversity. The more diverse we can make our organizations, the better it is. Uh, the better it is for society and actually it makes our organizations better as well. Okay, uh, the question comes in from uh, Mr. Prasoon Bhattacharya. Prasoon is asking uh, Farad, as a principal employer, can we consider our contractors, workers like security, housekeeping, etc., employed from backward community like SCST, OBC, and motivate them to employ more candidates from this community? Uh, uh, Prasoon from uh, Wacker Metro, Metor. Uh, Prasun, yes, uh, why not? Uh, not the OBC as Farad explained to you. Uh, SCST is what we are looking at from uh, a CIA perspective. You are most welcome to go beyond uh, in, and follow the spirit of inclusive growth. Yes, indirect employment generated by you uh, needs to be mapped out and fed back. Uh, please uh, help them encourage, employ uh, and build skills of more and more SCST. Uh, people. Uh, one more question that has come in uh, Farad uh, from Sunil uh, Nalapalli. Uh, Sunil is asking, given the scale of employability efforts that are currently in place by many companies, can CI look at identifying and paneling a credible list of employment agencies, uh, private NGOs such as Unnati etc. so that we have some help in closing that loop with regards to employment most employability efforts. Uh, yeah. but, uh, this is a tricky uh, and most important one, right? So education, is it feeding into your employability uh, pipeline? Employability pipeline, is it feeding into your employment or entrepreneurial development pipeline so that lives are changed forever? Yeah. Uh, your take on this. So this is a very good, it's a very good question and it's something which we have actually thought about in, in the past as well. You see, the thing is, when we first started, the, the first uh, focus of efforts was really just getting action, getting action on the ground. So whether it is doing things for education in primary schools, whether it is for doing uh, uh, employability, skill development, uh, um, working with entrepreneurs, we just wanted to get, we wanted to just get some action on the ground. I think now, as this has been in place for a while, it does make sense for us to have a little more by way of evaluation and review of how effective our various actions are. So your question is very relevant and it's something which we have debated within CII as well to say that well which of these initiatives really work, which are the ones which are most effective, which are the ones which are not so effective. So for this we will have to do some studies uh, we are actually in discussion with a number of agencies to actually start doing some of this and as we do it, uh, we will certainly report back to you on, uh, on, on this. But it's a, it's a good point and it's, a, it's something which we will be uh, addressing. Sanjay uh, Jurapur is asking one more question. Uh, what are the data privacy requirements for any affirmative action initiatives? Uh, typically in Western world, uh, diversity data and reports are confidential and cannot be shared in USA, etc. Uh, Sanjay, if you look at uh, Ford, Ford Company's report or many reports on corporate sustainability, uh, people who are following, uh, uh, following the triple bottom line approach who are reporting against global reporting initiative, uh, you will find the diversity map in public domain. In fact, a lot of people are nowadays encouraging the macro level data in your organization to be shared with external world vis-a-vis uh, -vis gender, vis-a-vis -vis ethnicity, so on and so forth. So uh, in individual persons, uh, uh, you know, sharing the cast of a person may be a problematic thing, uh, but certainly not diversity mapping at the macro level. So you may want to refer to certain uh, uh, certain sustainability reports and even uh, uh, financial annual reports, a lot of companies even from western world 
have started sharing it with a lot of pride, their data on diversity. Uh, yeah, Bashir is asking, is there a writer available to introduce affirmative action? Bashir Kazi from uh, Tata Business Support Services, he is asking if there is any write-up uh, available to introduce affirmative action to target audience. Uh, Bharat, can you use uh, CI as white paper? Yes, we can certainly give you that and we can, uh, in fact, there are you know some case studies which we could use also which you could which you could uh, which you could uh, use as well uh, so we can certainly send that to you well a uh, very interesting question coming in from uh, Sayukta Sisodhya uh, uh, Sayukta is asking do you think with this affirmative action in the longer run we will be able to have uh, the quota system removed from the government sector yeah, that's a good question, Sanju. Uh, the, 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 main, the main thing here is that we have to show adequate result. And if we show adequate result uh, in the private sector, that the way we are going about it through voluntary action, uh, and it actually works, uh, that is the way that we can actually um, demonstrate that this is the right model. But we have to show action and we have to actually show results. Devdutt uh, Mohanty Farad is asking, is it mandatory for a company to drive all four E's or can, can the company choose to focus on one of the E's and maximize the drive? There is no, there is no prescribed formula. I think we would encourage you to do whatever it is possible for you to do uh, within your realm of, uh, of capability. So we would just encourage you to do something uh, the more you can do, the better, but it doesn't mean that you have to do all four E's. You can do a great job on one of the E's, uh, um, and the, the wider you can you can make it reach, the better. Yeah, uh, uh, there's one more question which has come in uh, from Suresh Reddy. He's asking, can we access this webinar audio file for disseminating inside the organization? Suresh, better idea would be if you can contact our CIO office uh, of your region. Uh, we'd be most happy to come over to your organization and have a communication capsule for your people talking more about why there is need of affirmative action and how to go ahead and uh, deploy affirmative action uh, uh, within your company. So uh, more than sharing this uh, webinar audio, uh, we'll be most happy to come over and share with you what all can be done. Uh, Serge David from Sandvik uh, Farad is asking, uh, can we get steps or guide to, uh, for introducing uh, supply chain diversity? Yeah, that's something which we can and provide you. Um, we can have someone from CII come and talk to you. Uh, we can also have someone from uh, Dickey uh, join us as well uh, and then uh, give, you, give you some more information on how to go forward on this. Uh, uh, Mr. Desai is asking uh, any benchmark who is doing better in this initiative, if yes, how they are doing. Uh, Mr. Desai, uh, CI has uh, started coming out with the update and there is a periodical also that comes out uh, from CI okay. capturing the best uh, practices. Uh, it's titled Endeavor. Uh, uh, we will uh, be able to share Endeavor with you. Uh, it captures uh, the best practices CI member companies are carrying out in their own companies. Uh, feel free to connect with us. Uh, you are local CI office will be most happy to uh, make available uh, a copy of uh, Endeavor. Uh, yeah, baby is thanking us. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, uh, uh, if there are, uh, we can have a couple of questions and uh, uh, then close the session. Uh, yeah. I think uh, any, any yeah. other thing for us as closing remarks you would want to share? Yeah. I think I think what you know we should we should just mention again is that uh, uh, our efforts have only begun. Uh, it's still a real drop in the ocean in terms of really having uh, impact. Um, but what is most important is that we need to scale up the effort, 
and to scale up the effort we need to see very much more activity, uh, more activity in the companies that have already started, maybe widening it uh, within those companies and then getting more other companies who are yet to start to come on board as well. So uh, it is by sharing examples of what works in our respective organizations uh, which provides the opportunity for us to learn and maybe then implement some of those ideas in our own organization or in our own communities. So I think that is a way that we can actually scale this up. Uh, Farad, there is a question from uh, D.U. Menon from LNT. He is asking uh, non-SCST vendors or service providers engaging predominantly with SCST employees, can it be considered as affirmative action? Uh, well, Mr. Menon, uh, it will be considered as indirect employment generated by LNT, LNT in the domain of affirmative action. So they, by, because the uh, entrepreneurs don't belong to the categories, uh, they won't be qualifying as supply chain diversity, but they would certainly feed it into indirect employment that is generated vis-a-vis -vis SCSTs. Uh, with this, uh, I thank uh, Farad so much for sparing time and uh, sharing his views on affirmative action. Uh, this indeed was a wonderful session with, uh, as I said, uh, more than 100 and uh, I think a CIA person tells me that it's far more than 100 companies joining in. Uh, it has been wonderful to talk to you through this webinar and uh, as Farad said, it's, it's just a beginning. Feel free to uh, continue to be in touch with CI on the issue of affirmative action. Uh, we, we are committed to take forward the agenda of inclusive growth uh, uh, through this affirmative action program. Thank you so very much for joining in and have a wonderful day and a very happy new year from Farad and me, Sriram. Uh, it's goodbye for now. Thank have you. a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. The organizer has ended the session and